Back in the Warwickshire town of Southam, Diane Dalton continues her journey to discover her identity. She's coped with being a foundling for 46 years. It's inevitable, she wonders, who abandoned her and why. Very, very difficult. I don't know when my birthday is. It's silly little things that mean nothing to people that know when they were born, but things like that do, you know, do have a little bit of an impact on you. At Rectory Farm in Southam, where she was left in 1959, she hopes she'll see a traditional farmhouse that she's imagined since childhood. But it's not to be. A local quarry worker explains. There used to be an actual farm here, uh, Rectory Farm. This was the actual site of the main farm. Right. Whether there was sort of outbuildings and right. cottages around it as well, yeah. I'm not really sure no. of that. But uh, like I say, when we sort of first moved on here to start the new Spires Quarry, there was still a lot of old farm machinery. Right. And like brick, brick walls left. Not a great no, deal left, no. but you know, enough to know that there was a there farm. Was something there. It's not a great deal now of evidence of anything, really, is it? It's hard to imagine there was a farm here. I know. And it's still nice and quiet. During the 1970s, the cottage and land of Rectory Farm were cleared as the cement quarry next door expanded. Diane's hopes of tracking down the Nibs family, who lived at the farm in 1959, are receding. I suppose I begin by saying, what do you think of the place? <laughs> <laughs> well. It's hard to imagine that there was a, that there probably was a farm here, really. But it's nice. It's nice to, to come back here and it's nice and peaceful, and it's nice to, to just know whereabouts it was. What information did you have about this place? Did you have any clues, any details? All I had was a newspaper cutter to say that I was abandoned on a farm worker's doorstep, um, and I was found by a William Nibs. Um, they heard a car start up and saw the headlights once they'd found me on the doorstep and that apparently it was quite a, a nasty rainy night and I was left in a Moses basket with some clean clothes and baby milk and blankets and that's that's all I'd got to go on really. Um, I was then looked after by a policeman's wife and then taken into care. Diane now thinks the local police will be her last possible source of information. Maybe the staff can find officers who were involved in her case 46 years ago. From her press cuttings, Diane knows that she was brought to this flat above the police station on the night she was found and looked after by the sergeant's wife while the search went on for her birth mother. Police forces from the surrounding four counties were involved. Within 24 hours, the police at Southam identify Sergeant Edkins as the investigating officer on Diane's case. Now in their early 90s, Reginald Edkins and his wife Monica still live in Southam, just half a mile away from where Diane was found in 1959. We used to ring up now and again the social services to find out what was happening, you see, but as, as I found out, she was adopted very quickly by a nice family. But she was, as far as I can remember, she was extremely good. Was she a very tiny baby? Could you tell how old she was? Fairly newborn. I should say about a week to 10 days is about all. And I've got a feeling that there was a bottle of milk made up in the basket which I heated up and gave her. And after about two hours, they rang the social services. After about two hours, of course, they fetched her down to the social services in uh, Leamington. So I only had her for about two hours. This is Diane's biggest break so far. The last time she was with Reg and Monica, she was just a few days old. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. You're a little bit larger than the last time I saw you. <laughs> and I can't remember you. No, I'm sure you can't. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so lovely. Oh, I did. <laughs> lovely to see you. It's lovely to see you. It's a long, long time ago. It is, yeah. 46 you are now. I am, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Can you remember anything? Or much not. Only the little baby in the... Well, it was basket, wasn't it? Mm. It was a sort of basket. Mm. Mm. That's all. And how long did you... A look couple after? of hours really? before social services came and took you away. So you rang social services and they came and took you away then. Oh. But for a couple of hours I had you. And I have a feeling that there was a bottle in the cot. Your mother must have thought. Yeah. Yes, you would I might be feeding. hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. This is the gentleman. Can you manage? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Pleased to meet uh, you. Uh, <laughs> I hear it all about you. Now it's nice seeing you now. Yes, uh, and you. Yeah. Uh, Gosh. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. You like I, now. I have, yeah. Yeah, I've got two daughters. Oh. Oh, Are you all right? Do you want to sit back down? Yeah. 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 Diane hopes that Monica will be able to fill in the missing pieces of her story, including the origins of the name given to her on Discovery, Penny Southam. You were always referred to as Penny Southam if yeah. you were referred to yeah. you because of being born in, yes. being left in Southam, yeah. and found in Southam. Can't think why the Penny. <laughs> Did you know the family that found me? They were farm people, weren't they? Because mm. they've got quite a large family themselves, haven't they? Mm. I think. I didn't know them. No. Was there any gossip in the, you know, in the village at the time? Oh, yes. After, after having found the baby, there was quite a lot of gossip as to whose baby was it, you know, and who was responsible for this sort of thing. But nothing ever came of it. But nothing was ever sort of concluded no. as to any no. possibilities of nothing at all today's been a, an interesting day and it's peace of mind more than anything else and i've enjoyed and it's meant a lot to to meet the lady that that looked after me for a couple of hours because she's the first person really that i've had any physical contact with other than my, you know than my mum and dad from being abandoned so it was very nice to to meet her it did move me, and um, but she just hoped that I had a happy life and she hoped that I carry on having a happy life. And I hope I do as well, because I have been happy and, you know, it's it, life's what you make of it, really. And it was, But it was very moving to meet her because it was so unexpected as well. And, you know, it, it obviously did have an impact on her because she can still remember things as well.